My name is Kurt Heckeroth. I've worked for the Salem District BLM out of Tillamook for 30 years. The nonprofit organizations in this local area were gearing up to do restoration work, but they didn't have plant material. And so they knew we were doing reforestation projects, so they would come to us to get surplus material. This site here grows about 15,000 plants. It services five watershed councils, the Soil and Water District, the Tillamook Estuary Partnership, and the BLM. The majority of this project is done on private land, which is really interesting concept for the BLM. It's like, well, so why would we do that? Well, when you look at watersheds as a whole, it doesn't do much good to, to have your uplands in good shape as far as habitat and then have undesired conditions down in the lower watersheds. The BLM has collaborated and become partners with uh, you know, local agencies, nonprofit organizations, private landowners. So the benefit to the public lands is really just having a continuity to, to good habitat um, along the entire watershed. And so when the actual planting starts to go on in, in uh, usually about February, uh, we have contractors and volunteers and students and youth corps, they come in and they get the plants and take them out and plant them from this site. My name is Denise Lofman and I'm the executive director of the Tillamook Bay Watershed Council and we're in, located in Tillamook, Oregon, but I also help manage Camp Tillamook. So I kind of help run the project on the non for all the nonprofit partners. And what we're doing today is we are taking plants that we grow with the Native Plant Cooperative. Um, I think you were there earlier today and um, we're bringing them out in the field. And this, today we have volunteers out and, and we're planting in order to enhance the diversity of the riparian area. So in about 10 or 15 years, we would see the conifers that we're planting today uh, be probably about uh, 30 feet tall and getting ready to kind of go above the alder, um, which is what we want. And if we don't have other things planted in the understory, then the riparian area becomes denuded. And that's, that's not what we want. So over the next few decades, what we want to see is the conifers beginning to come back in. This morning we visited uh, our nursery where we uh, grow uh, locally adapted native plant stock for riparian restoration. We also visited a site where we had volunteer planting going on up at Waldron Creek on the Miami River. You saw there where they were doing some understory planting under some uh, red alder that was, you know, maybe 20 years old or so. And so basically you're just enhancing the, uh, the habitat at an earlier age without taking any of the other alder out. So what we're, where we're at right now is a good place to complement what we looked at earlier because it just shows you over time what those stands can look like. And, and I guess the bottom line is, is that, that this whole group has gone from being competitive against each other to actually collaborative and, and working together to accomplish the same goals. They were all coming in individually and competing against each other to get material that wasn't, wasn't really that healthy by collaborating and becoming a partnership and creating a sustainable supply of native plant, locally adapted native plant material. Um, now they're able to work together, uh, share materials, and actually know that it's healthy, it's good stock, and it's local stock. And they, when they plant it, the survival is over 90, 95%. So it just makes for a great program and the partnership has blossomed because of it.